President, uh, Lady President, fellow members, guests, and esteemed guests. First of all, thank you all very, very much for coming. I think it's a, a testament to the generosity of the members of Pleasanton, or that's what I thought, and then I think actually it's the pulling power of the panel, actually. Um, but it is fantastic to see so many faces here, and uh, it, it really is very much appreciated. Uh, I was going to go through all the, the, the technical bits, you know, about what you do this evening, because we're going to try and get as much money as possible, because the aim of this evening is actually to not only raise money for Rosemere, but to raise the profile of Rosemere in this area. And uh, so, you know, that, that's the whole purpose of it. And the, the Norman, the proper profession, is actually going to tell you how to do things, because it, it'll tell you a lot better than I will. <laughs> Mr. President, Lady President, uh, members of Pleasant Golf Club, special guests, uh, esteemed guests, and some ordinary people. <laughs> it's about to be, as was mentioned there, it's going to be a great evening. We've got two very special guests in here. Before I, I, I give a quick intro to them, uh, just to let you know, we have the raffle. We've got the Rosemere envelopes on the table. You'll see them there. We would like you to place £5 donation in there. That will be the raffle. So it's not really it's a donation come raffle as well. £5 in the envelopes. If anybody wants any £5 notes, by the way, Brian Joyce has, has got a load of white ones. <laughs> <laughs> Last time he took a tenner out of his pocket, it were a conquer. <laughs> no, he knows I'm only joking. Brian's a lot of guy. You know. The kind of guy, you know, he is a kind of guy. I can lend him a thousand pound and you never saw him again until the money well spent. <laughs> I am joking. Anyway, five pound in the envelope and he has got a load of fibres. I've got to Actually, they stopped printing them now, so it, it will be quite a rarity. If you want to put ten pounds in, we will not stop you at all. We will not stop you at all, but still. Uh, we all did. We do a lot of uh, with Rosemere Golfers Against Cancer uh, with with Paul Eels, who's been uh, one of our patrons uh, since we started off. Myself and Paul, and I welcome Phil uh, cordially in a moment. But Paul Eels is a professional, and we all, we auction off a four ball with Paul and I. Uh, we'll tell you all about it. We've got to auction one of those off as well. And we've also got to auction off a, a signed Blackburn Rovers uh, shirt for this season, 2009-2011. It's signed by all the players and some of them enjoying up writing. It's, it's a genuine Blackburn shirt. There's no sweat marks on it at all. <laughs> I'm quite prepared to take a stick about Bolton Wobblers all day. One black little fuck actually came up to me and he knows, he's a great friend of mine, and he knows I'm a Wobblers fan. He said, oh, you really will be the duck yesterday, didn't you? I said, yes, we did. We were terrible. I said, if we play like that all year, we'll end up where Black Renovas are at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it is done in Banton. It is done in Banton. Right, as I said, uh, will you please give a welcome? We will be doing the question and answers after we've had a wonderful meal. And as we are in Blackburn, it is, of course, chicken. <laughs> The directors are going to get the money back somewhere, aren't they? <laughs> and I don't mean the directors, I mean the directors. We've got Paul Eels there, the tour pro for 15 years, European tour winner in Spain. He's on the board of director of the European tour as his instinctive golf coach and under broadcasting in his spare time. So come back from Morocco and uh, broadcasted all over the world, and he's a, a lovely lad. Would you please welcome Paul Eels? And an extra special welcome to our new patron. Myself and Paul have been patrons for quite a while. Our new patron offered his services to Rosemere. Uh, for those people who, who know the golf, and a lot of people who do, uh, non, he, he must be one of the few sportsmen in the world that everybody knows him by his uh, nickname rather than his real name. Phil Morby, otherwise known as Wobbly. We'll go, we'll go into that later. <laughs> it's nothing to do with his goal. Anyway, how about this? 41 wins on the PGA Tour with nine different golfers. In 1991, the Masters Champion, Championship with Ian Woosnam. Eight Ryder Cups, only on the losing side once. He's carried for Lathabal, Woosit, Ross Fisher, who he's with at the moment, Darren Clark and Thomas Bjorn. Would you please welcome Phil Morby. <laughs> sat here who played golf thinking, God, I wish I was him, I wish I was a pro golfer. So how did you actually get into it? What was the beginning like? 
Well, started at the age of 11, just jumped on a bus with three friends, went to Southport Municipal, hired some golf clubs, and that was it. Can you imagine that now, 11-year-olds getting on a bus to go from Mutchul to Southport and uh, being left to do your own thing? So that was really the start of it, and then a, a family friend uh, invited us to join Royal Pemberton Golf Club. Oh, right. and, that, and, that, uh, and that really was the, the start of our play. So it was just one of those things that we got bored of playing football and there was an opportunity to play golf. So when did you realise, what, what age did you realise, thought, hey, I'm quite good at this, I could do something here. <laughs> About 38. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no, I should be serious. You can see that. Yeah, probably around about 16, I finished runner-up in the County Boys Championship. I was never really fantastic as an amateur. I played one season for the county, off one handicap. Always wanted to try and play as a professional, but I just wasn't good enough. So the, the next route in was becoming an assistant pro, where I think a lot of the kids these days, if they don't make it as a player straight away, they tend to give up far too quickly. I was 27 by the time I got on the Challenge Tour and 30 by the time I got on the main tour. So, uh, not quite as good as Monsero then. 17 years of age, great golfer, good looking, I hate him. Real talented as well, yes. <laughs> Wobbly. Did, first of all, the, the nickname, Wobbly, who gave it you how? Uh, it was uh, one of Mark James's ex caddies called John Morehouse. And uh, I've got a very funny gait when I walk, I can't walk in a straight line. And so uh, that's where the name Wobbly came from. I mean, uh, drunk or sober, I, I just walk the same anyway. <laughs> I'm all over the golf course, really. So. That's it, carrying a bag in the gate. That must be really tiring. It's a good idea. I've been straight up. I'm going to sit down and can you put that fence up? Come in. Hey, that's for serious, please. John Croft. Did, did, winning the, this is a question, did winning the Masters with Woozy surpass the Ryder Cup experience? Uh, definitely, yes, obviously, your, your first, that's my first major. Hopefully I'll have a few more in Ross or wherever else I carry for them in the future. But yeah, definitely, I mean, it was Woozy's first major. He'd just become number one in the world the week before by winning in New Orleans, so he had something to prove. And to win, you know, back-to-back -back tournaments in America is, you know, fantastic. And, uh, uh, the experience playing with Tom Watson, yeah, playing with Tom Watson for the last two days, and obviously uh, the Americans wanted uh, Tom to win, and uh, I think we got a three or four shot lead uh, over Watson, uh, standing on the thirteenth tee. I think uh, Jose Maria was out, but was a couple of shots behind us, and on the thirteenth you've got to hit a high draw around there. It's massive double leg right to left, and there's trees on the left, trees on the right. If you don't draw it. And, was it a great shot because he used to hit the ball with person and drive us a long way then uh, and he tried to take it over the corner he just pulled it a little bit and I could see it hit the trees and there was a massive cheer and we just said oh fantastic we got over the corner I said I don't think so was that's an American crowd they're clapping because you've got in the water <laughs> and he couldn't believe it but uh, I've had some great uh, experiences riding cups that you know the, the team spirit in the room is, is brilliant <laughs> You know, and they've got, they've got good camaraderie, the caddies and the players. But definitely the, uh, winning the winning the uh, Masters of Woods in Nigeria is the highlight of my career so far. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. I suppose this follows on. Dave says, when Woods won the Masters, how long did the drinking session go on for? <laughs> it's still going on. <laughs> We meet every Tuesday, we meet tomorrow, and we meet but now during the winter as well. And I, I, I'm, people don't phone me before lunchtime because I usually get up at the crack of noon. <laughs> and I remember I was captain a few years ago, and we were saying, Tony and Andy, the, and we said, Well, we've got to play tomorrow, said, but we're normally fit playing half time, but unfortunately, the vets at, um, at Flixton have got a game, so we've got to tee off early. I said, What time? They said, Nine o'clock. I said, What, in the morning? <laughs> well, I was captain, so you've got to set a press, you know, I thought, fair enough, captain, show you a work, lad. <coughs> so I said, all right, then, see you down there. Well, uh, I got up, well, I set me alarm, I set me alarm for about uh, quarter to eight, because uh, it's further around, I thought. But, uh, you know, you wake up just before the alarm goes off, 
You know, you do that sometimes. You can't. And I woke up, I thought, oh, and I stopped it so I wouldn't wake up because I didn't want to disturb my lovely wife who was slumbering <laughs> at the side of me because I'm considerate, I am. So I got up, it was bloody freezing. Honestly, like, in November it was. And I got up, and I got, you know, the sun was just rising. <coughs> Frost all over the place. I thought, bloody hell, I can't cope with this. So anyway, I got my clothes, went into the spare room, got a shower there, got changed, went downstairs, made me own breakfast. Don't you look complex? <laughs> I do, I do. So, and then I got the car and I let the car roll. I didn't turn the engine on because I didn't want to wake her because I could sit her a tire. Let the roll down to the bottom and then start it. I've got to the club. We do on the first tee, snow started to fall. I said, hey, I'm sorry, but, hey, I don't mind any frocks, but not snow as well. Captain's property will call it off. All right. Well, I'll go on out there. So I went up, parked the car at the bottom of the drive because it's still early. Parked up with the drive. Didn't run it up the drive because I didn't want to wake her. Went upstairs, let myself in. I'm going upstairs. Undressing myself so I don't disturb again until it freezing my pa- it was absolutely freezing. I get up there, went in, didn't turn the light, I walked round the side of the bed, lifted it up slowly, stark naked, and I'm freezing and I ease my backside and my back just caught her back. And she went, Ooh. I said, I'm sorry, I said, it's bloody freezing out there. She said, Yeah, and that silly bugger's gonna play in golf. <laughs> Indeed, you've been a great crowd. I'll leave you with two thoughts. Mums and dads always look after your kids because they will be the ones who decide which home you're going in. <laughs> and secondly, and more important of all, may you all live long enough to see the end of the sale at DFS. <laughs> Good night, God bless. Thank you for coming.